In this video, we're going to talk about what I consider being the foundation of network security, which is network segregation. That means cutting your network into multiple smaller network. So if something goes south somewhere, it's going to be contained. It's not going to spread throughout the entire organization. We will also talk about access rules, creating access rule to give access from one network to another internal network, as well as creating access rule to access internet for different of our internal networks. And make sure to stick around until the end, as we will do some packet capture to find out ports and protocol that needs to be open for different things to work. And also we'll use connection monitor to find out why I'm having intermittent issues with one of my servers. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall, helping customers and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you like this type of video, please, by all means, let me know. Give me a call, send me an email, leave a comment below, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, hit the subscribe button. By all means, I want to know your level of interest for those videos. At the very high level, all companies are the same. Every company have HR, finance, sales, customer facing stuff like a phone system, a web server, they do have manufacturing, whatever they're making videos or spoons or whatever it may be. And way too many time, I see customer having one big flat network. Everything and everyone is on the same network. So think about it. If engineering is doing their job, they're looking for things and doing R&D, testing out, developing things, it could happen that eventually they may get hit by a ransomware, for instance. So what happened? Everything goes down, right? There, everybody is on the same network. So payroll is down. You lost account receivable. Manufacturing stop. Everything that is customer facing can be of an issue as well. So think about it. The, behind the radar, the, on, behind closed door, things don't go well, but also customer know about it. They're trying to call you, the, the phone doesn't ring. They're trying to hit your website, it's down. So you're in deep trouble. To me, network segregation is the foundation again of network security. The idea of to put key device and people on their own network isolated from the others. Does that ring any bell, right? Isolating people to make sure infection doesn't spread. So think about it. Why would engineering need access to HR, right? They don't need to. Okay, maybe they want to poke around in HR system to get a raise, but we don't want that, right? So we there's no need for engineering to talk to the HR server. So let's connect to the firewall and do this. So first thing first, as you can see, the UI might be different from, from what you guys are used to. If you're watching this in mid-2020, this is our new UI, the Sonic, Sonic OS 7. So it, it is obviously different from what you guys have with probably the Gen 6 and a half on your TZ600 or TZ400 and those firewalls. So don't worry, the layout is a different, uh, but the name of the menus and the different option is the same for the content we're going to cover today. So if we want, if we want to do network segregation, first thing we need to go is into interfaces. And I'll run you I'll run you through the different interface I have set and why they're done that way. As you can see, I've used on X0, I kept it as the LAN uh, zone. So it's where it's my lab. I just poke around things and this is my home network. So I got most of the Sonic Wall stuff, my Active Directory, and most of everything that is in regards of my lab is in this network. So this way it keeps my lab isolated from everything else in my house. So something can go south from the PlayStation uh, or the Apple TV or whatever other devices I may have on my Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi does not have access to the LAN because it's a different network and I haven't created any policies. So my SonicWall lab is safe from everything else in my network. Then obviously I have internet. Uh, I've created another network for home automation stuff for the same reason as my lab, right? I don't want anything to have access to home automation. And if the girlfriend get a ransomware on her Mac, I don't want the garage door to open by itself, right? So I want things to be again, isolated from each other. I got stuff for hosting. For instance, uh, I have a the SonicWall SMA that is there. And the SMAs are dedicated work from home appliance. So it's it is in this network. To me personally, everything that is accessible from the outside end up in this network. 
Um, I also, have, well, by the way, for the uh, the SMA, you may want to check in the description if you want to know more about our work from home appliance. I've created a couple of videos. I'll put the link in the, the description down below. Next one I have is VoIP. So I got my VoIP system. I have a PBX in my house and I got two VoIP phone as well. And for the same reason, I want those things to be isolated, right? Why would the kid with the iPad be able to actually access the interface of the phone themselves or the VoIP system, right? There is no reason for anyone in my house or in your organization to be able to access the web interface of any given phone. So it is totally isolated. So if something goes south in my network, I know my phone will keep working because there is no access to this network and there and that network has no access out as well. So it's completely isolated. Later on, I'll show you the access rules, but you'll see that the, there is only one policy for this thing to reach out and it's to the VoIP provider. Next, I've created a zone for management, management of the different things I have. I got the Sonic Wall access point, so they, 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 they have to be managed. So they, they are managed on that network. The same goes for the management interface of my switch, of my VMware server, uh, management access of my QNAP. So everything that is that has a management interface uh, in my network is actually managed through this network. So I, have, I can have a tight control over who can control and manage what in my network. Then I got two Wi-Fi network. Uh, I got one for IoT and one for SonicWall. So here that could be pretty much the same as an enterprise for guest Wi-Fi and the corporate Wi-Fi. So the IoT for me in my house is the PlayStation, the Apple TV, the smart TV. Anything that I have that goes on Wi-Fi is on this network. And the SonicWall Wi-Fi is only the SonicWall laptop. So it's mainly the idea. So what you could do, it really depends on how your organization is built, what is crucial and most, most important to you. But you can decide to have, let's say, a uh, HR network where you'll put a couple servers they have and the six employees you have would be on this network. So if something happened uh, in another network, well, payroll is not going to be affected. So one thing I could be missing for any organization is pretty much having a uh, engineering network, right? Not engineering, sorry, manufacturing. Because, you know, companies, they usually create stuff. Well, companies do not want production to be affected. So it could be a great idea to put all those automation system and automat and those type of things that are built, that are into the production uh, environment to be on their own network, isolated from everything else. So let's say we'll pick interface seven. As you can see, it is unassigned, no IP, no nothing, no link, clean. So I'm just going to say we'll create an interface for this network so as you can see we can create a zone i can apply to different zones i already have but as you can see there is no zone for uh, manufacturing so we'll just select create a new zone and we'll call it manufacturing security type there's different types in here there's trusted public wireless and some ssl vpn so trusted is usually everything inside public is what you would be considering accessible from the outside. Use wireless if you use the SonicWall access point and you want the access point to be managed by the SonicWall firewall. And SSL VPN is obviously SSL VPN. So here we'll just pick, it's a trusted interface. Something very important in my own opinion is to uncheck all those. As you can see here, it, say, it says, oh, Auto generate access rules to allow traffic between zones of the same trust level. So if you have this one selected, it will create security access rules that will allow any traffic between any interfaces that are in the same trust level. So you're trusted. So personally, I want this zone or any zone and interface that I created to have no access whatsoever. By default, I want nothing to work. If I plug something in there, there is no internet access. There is no nothing. So, and then I will create the policies I want. So personally, my own personal advice is to uncheck those. And within a couple of minutes, we'll just create access rules ourselves to only allow the traffic we want. So now we created the zone. As you can see, manufacturing is here. Next is to give it an IP. We'll just go, um, we'll put this, oh, we'll just pick this here. And then we can decide, do I want the firewall to be manageable from 
this interface. So maybe you want, maybe you don't really depend. Uh, we can just turn it on. Something I would advise to enable is ping, right? It's always nice for troubleshooting to be able to ping the firewall and see if you got network connectivity to your default gateway. You get more stuff in the advanced like link speed, shut down the port and other things like this, which we're, gonna, we're not gonna cover today. So I'm gonna click okay on this. And as you can see, I do have my interface number seven configured for manufacturing. Now, if you wanna go back into zones and see what you've created and do changes to the zone, you can go into uh, the zone themselves. They're all here. As you can see, it's all the zone I have created. So we can go, you can review the zones and make sure that, okay, my VoIP zone, I'll edit this thing and make sure that everything is unchecked, right? So you can decide. Uh, which one you want to be checked or not. Next is to create policies because we've created a bunch of zones, tons of interfaces, but by default, because we unchecked everything, there is no access rule at all. And that is exactly what I want. Personally, I want nothing to be open and I want to open exactly what I need. So let's build those access rules. Now that we've created our X7 interface for manufacturing and give it an IP and we start moving machines into that 192.168.55 network, all our manufacturing stuff um, and according to documentation from the manufacturer, we need to open a specific port going to a engineering server that we do have in this network and that server has 10.6.254.40 come IP as IP. So now we need to create an access rule to say that a machine in here can access another machine in this network. So we're going to policies and then we will use the menu on top here where we have all the interfaces, all the zones that we have. So this is our from. So we want to go from manufacturing to the LAN. So we'll pick this dot here, which will show us the policies we have from manufacturing to land. And as you can see, we have none. So we'll create a policy to allow the traffic that we need. As you can see, we have our source and destination. So zone is manufacturing to land. Then we got the IP, source IP, destination IP, source port and destination port. So I know the destination is a server that I have called engineering server. As you can see, the alias does not exist yet. So I will create it using the new address object here. So we're going to call this engineering server. It is on the LAN. It is a single IP, but I have a choice of one IP, a range of IP, a subnet, and a QDN or a MAC address. In my case, I will go with the MAC address, uh, the, the IP address. And my source IP is the manufacturing machine. And to save us some time, I already have created the alias. So manufacturing machine here. And next is to create the port that we need. So we'll just go here and create the engineering port that we need. So we'll create the service object, call it, then calling it engineering port. According to documentation, it is TCP port 8 five two one that this specific system needs. So I'm going to open this port. So as you can see here, just to recap, we do have my source and destination. So it's going from manufacturing zone to the LAN, from the manufacturing machine to the server on the port that this thing needs. And, and usually by default, the source port is always random for a lot of protocols. So I want to keep it as is with the any here. So, and we hit save. Now we'll have our policy showing up and it's nice. You can put your mouse over. It's going to show you the different IPs for different things. So we know it's coming from 192.165.53.55.3, which is the machine and the server going to 10.6.254.40. And I've got my port here, 8521. So now we've created one policy to allow one thing to work so now if you do have more things that needs to be open now is the time to do it and again using this to go from one zone to another zone
Next, we have a VoIP server. And let's just pretend I have absolutely no clue of what ports needs to be open outbound. So we'll use Packet Monitor and find out. So here is the issue you have. You have a VoIP server, it's an open source thing. You're new in the company, there is no documentation whatsoever on this VoIP server. And you see a policy like this saying, anything in the VoIP zone, any IP can go anywhere outside on any port and any protocol. And of course everything works because nothing is blocked. So in terms of security, it's far from being the best. So you want to know what ports are open, but again, you have no documentation and it's not like you could just delete this policy and now try start to troubleshoot and try to find ports as you get logs of denied packet, right? So what we will do is to use packet monitor and find out what ports are needed for this thing to work. So we go into monitoring, packet monitor. We go into general monitor filter, IP that are TCP or UDP, and you put the source and you put the IP address of the VoIP server. So you'll need to find that one out. Uh, but you put the, you, you, you tell the firewall, I wanna see every single packet that have this IP as the source, which is of course your VoIP server. So we click on save, then you click on start packet capture. And what I'll do to make sure we track everything, I'm gonna reboot my VoIP server. And of course it's not the type of thing I would advise to do during business hour, but outside business hour, reboot the VoIP server or any server you have. So you make sure that maybe at boot up, it needs to connect to 12 different things. So that's for me a way to track those things. Okay, now as you can see, I do have a fair amount of line items that show up showing at the beginning some DNS requests, port 53 of course is DNS. This thing need also NTP, network time protocol. Of course, it's always good also to review what, what are those communication that the server is at attempting, right? Maybe there is already a virus or something bad going on. So use judgment when you start opening policies to make sure that what is going on is something that actually makes sense, right? If you open port DNS to an IP address, well, might be a good idea to check with NS lookup to make sure that this is actually a real DNS server. This IP going on port 4569 and this IP as well. So this seems to be everything that my server, my VoIP server actually here needs to actually get to work. So let's go ahead and create policies to allow only those specific ports and IPs to be open. So again, from my VoIP to my WAN, we do have this policy here that allows everything outbound without any sort of security or filtering. So we will go here and now create different policies. So the source will be my VoIP server, which I already have an alias for. I have done, like I mentioned, some research about the DNS IP I see here, the one that ends with 129. And see if you put your mouse over, I know that this is already something I've set in my firewall as Bell DNS servers. So that makes sense. This is expected to be open. and. Of course, we just open DNS. So click save on this. Next, we need to open NTP. And I don't think I've created all those aliases for NTP. So we're going to go into object and actually create them. First thing I could do is actually search to make sure to check if I don't already have this IP. So that one doesn't exist. Put the other IP in the search. That doesn't exist either. And that one doesn't exist. So we're going to go and add, call it NTP1. Put the first IP we saw here. And it is on the WAN zone, right? Because this IP5439 reside on the internet. So we pick WAN. So we click on save. Nice feature that I like. This thing stays open, so I can just change for NTP2. Update the IP address, no need to change the zone, no need to change the type, just update the IP, hit save. 
pick the third IP, call it NTP3 IP. And save this. Next, I'm going to create a group to put them all together. So I'll call it NTPs and simply find all the hosts I have for NTP and make them all member of it. So as you can see, I create a group called NTP that contain those three IP addresses that I need for NTP. So now I'm going to create a policy just for this. So click on add. Tricks box address will be to my NTPs on NTP port and save this. And next again, we will finally create the last policy I need from again, my VoIP server to the VoIP providers. Okay, now we believe we opened everything we need. We created the different access rule. We believe are the ports that are needed and the, the destination IPs. Next is to make sure that there is really nothing going through the any, any policy we have here. So what we will do will be to clear the counters, reboot the server, and now start packet monitoring. But instead of monitoring everything coming from the VoIP server, we'll just monitor anything going through this policy. So the way to do this, you go into monitoring, packet monitor, and we go into the monitor filter. Before we were monitoring everything coming out of this source IP, so we're gonna just remove everything here and turn on this. So we will enable filter only on firewall access rules or app rules. So we're just gonna turn this on, save. We will not click start monitoring right away. We'll reboot the server, wait a couple of seconds to make sure it's shutting down and rebooting, and then we'll start the, the packet monitor. So next we go into the policy itself. We find our any any policy that opens all ports and we will turn on packet monitoring. That means that every single packet going through this policy will be sent to our packet capture. Give it a couple of seconds to do it shut down. Make sure it's not generating traffic while shutting down. And we will go into our packet monitor and we'll hit start monitor. And while we're here, while waiting for this server to reboot, I will clear the counters here. So clear counter at the bottom. As you can see, everything is now back to zero. So server should be rebooted by now. So we'll click refresh to see how many times each policy got hit. As you can see, the vast majority of the hit have been on the rules we created, which is good, but we still have three hit on the any policy. So we'll go look at our packet monitor, trying to find out what it is. As you can see, I probably have leftover like other policies that are set with packet monitor to be turned on. It's a good thing because here we can see which access rule it is. So I can go back in my firewall and disable packet monitor on rule 197. So for this video, we'll just forget about anything on 197, we can actually sort them, we'll, which will make it easier. So this is the policy we are concerned about. And as you can see, it is all NTP that is being used. So that leads me to think that probably this VoIP server is using a domain name as a DNS server, and they are multiple uh, IP address answering this domain name, this FQDN. So next step would be to actually connect to that VoIP server, dig down and trying to find where it is and what's the, um, what is the domain name it is using the FQDN and then do a policy based on the FQDN, which I'll show you quick. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go in my VoIP server and trying to show you how to find what's the NTP entry in there. 
which is not relevant to this video. I'll just show you how to add a policy for NTP, but that it will be actually for FQDNs instead. So we just edit our NTP policy and I can just create a, let's say a new address object and see here I can do FQDN, which would allow me to put a domain name, which would be the same as we have in the VoIP server. Next, I went ahead on my VoIP server and did some changes before doing this video to show you another troubleshooting tools we have, which is called Connection Monitor. The issue I created is that my VoIP server can receive calls. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's going back and forth. Yes, it works. So no, it doesn't. So it's getting pretty annoying. So we're going to use troubleshooting tools to find out what is the issue. And instead of fixing it on the VoIP server, like putting it back the way it was, I will just do a change on the firewall so that it fixes the issue so I don't have to go back on the VoIP server. Again, I pretend to don't know that VoIP server. I don't know how it works. I don't know what's done in there. I just want to get things to work and I do everything on the firewall. So now here we will use Packet Monitor to try to identify and track this issue down. So we go into connection monitor here, put IP address of the VoIP server. As we can see, we only have one connection right now, one active connection to a NTP server. So there is no outbound connection at all for VoIP, which is the issue. So what we will do is wait for this to refresh and wait for the phone to himself do a connection. See, now we do have connection for the VoIP protocol that I'm using. As you can see here, we got expiry in seconds. So it expires in 14 seconds. So I'm gonna gonna go quick on this on this portion of the video. The issue is that the firewall is timing out UDP session every 30 seconds, and the VoIP server is reinitializing the VoIP the, the UDP session every 50 seconds. So my phone phone is working well for 30 seconds. Inbound call works because there's an active connection outbound. But when the firewall expires the session after 30 seconds then inbound call do not work. And that's how we can actually track it. If I hit refresh, see my connections are here. The last two, again, 40 seconds, refresh, five seconds, refresh, one second, and they're out. And then we can do the math. And they will be out for roughly 20 seconds. So solution for this is to go back in the policy, pick my policy for that specific port that we see the connection doesn't stay open and change my UDP timeout for 60 seconds. And now we'll go back into connection monitor and confirm that we got it right. Now we see the VoIP connection is here, expiring in 59 seconds, in 4, 20, 16, 11, 59. So see, my connection remain open. So now I know that my VoIP server is reinitiating that UDP session every 50 seconds. And if the firewall is killing it after 30 seconds, then that was exactly my issue. So I just crank it up to 60 seconds into the policy and that solve the issue that, again, frankly, I have unpurposely created on my VoIP server to demo the connection monitor of SonicWall. So that could be a great tool to know what are the connection that you have active in which protocol they use, where they go, and so forth. So it could be useful to troubleshoot problems that sometimes are probably not even related with SonicWall. It's a great troubleshooting tools for your network in general. Thanks for watching. Again, if you like that video, please let me know. Subscribe, thumbs up, comment, email, phone call, whatever you feel like. Next, I think you should look at the next video I've done, which is my tips and tricks number two about internet access control. Again, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.